a beautician who was supposed to be a pilot, a fire at a brush factory in France. So much has led up to Rain Cry's line of products. And I hadn't heard of Rain Cry products until about a year ago. I was shopping on skinstore.com and what happened was I was actually on the website. I've been shopping with skinstore for about 20 years and I was looking at Mason Pearson brushes. I'm a huge fan of those. And then I saw the rain cry brush and well brushes and the name kind of caught my eye and the brushes were really pretty and I'm a sucker <laughs> for beautiful brushes. Now, a couple of months ago, I began using the rain cry shampoo and conditioner for colored hair these. I'm actually almost out. I've been using them so much. I highlight my hair and get low lights about, you know, I don't know, every three or four months. And uh, today we will take a look at this stunning brush as well as the enhancing shampoo and retaining conditioner. And my goal with this video is to share what I found using these products with you and give you the information so you can make a more strategic shopping choice when you are looking at these products and make more educated purchases. Before we dive in here, in case you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Nicole. I'm 55 years old and I love sharing my top hair care products and tools with you because as I say, a woman's hair is her crown and glory. And regardless of what kind of hair we have, I feel like everybody just feels better about themselves and it's just more confident when they're having a good hair day. And actually, I wanna help you have a marvelous hair day every day. So my videos break out of the bottle. And of course we will look at, you know, regular, you know, shampoo, conditioner, styling products, things like that. But there will also be other tools and tricks and tips that will make a world of difference for your hair. So let's start with the company's very interesting founder and a history that includes JLo and Oribe. Now, if you want to bounce on over to the product review, I'll have timestamps, you know, down in the uh, description area, but this is a cool story. So you'll probably want to hear it. Faisal Kirishi is Rain Cry's founder and creative director. And his career started when he was a teenager. He needed an after school job and he saw a sign in the salon window that was advertising for an assistant wanted. And he applied thinking that that meant, you know, answering the phones kind of office-ish type of an assistant. Um, but he was hired by the owner on the spot and started from the bottom as a hairdresser's assistant, you know, sweeping up the floors, cleaning up after hairstylists, getting them coffee, all that kind of thing. And, you know, after a while, he got to take on more responsibilities within the salon. And then a few years later, he says that he was a fairly confident assistant. He was doing almost everything at the salon other than cutting hair. And at the time he was studying to be a pilot and he realized one day he should have been studying for hours and hours for an exam that was coming up. But instead of doing that, he ended up sketching haircuts for hours. So I think he kind of realized where his passion was and then he dropped out of pilot school and pursued a career in hair and he never looked back. As Faisal's beauty experience began to build, he also learned about makeup and he soon got a job at one of the country's best salons. And he said that like most things in his career, the rain cry line was a serendipitous accident. And many years in salons later, what happened was he developed a relationship with an older gentleman that would stop by his salon to sell hair supplies. Now this gentleman came from a small village in the French Alps and he would routinely travel, you know, back to North America um, from France where he was picking up luxurious ornate French hair supplies. One thing that he sold were amazing boar bristle styling brushes and Faisal tried a few and these brushes became an essential in his kit. So years later after the older gentleman had retired, Faisal needed more brushes and he did an exhaustive search for good brushes and he couldn't find anything that he really liked. So he called the company up that the uh, gentleman had you know, been getting the brushes from in the past. And then there's kind of two stories that I read. Um, one is that they told him that they'd recently had a fire at their factory and that their plans, you know, the molds, the drawings, you know, everything was destroyed. Now in another version of the story, it says that the brush manufacturer had been sold. But regardless, somehow the designs, the molds just were not available anymore. And they said that the only way that they'd be able to make the brushes again is if they started from scratch and Faisal assisted them with designing new molds. And shortly after that, Faisal left for Europe and worked with the French craftsmen to recreate the old peddler's product. Now, 
over the next year and a half, a team of top stylists tested lots of different designs. And then a while later, what happened was Faisal got a call from People Style Watch magazine and they were running a story about Jennifer Lopez. And they were interviewing Ori Bay about how he achieved JLo's look. And by the way, we are talking about the very famous Ori Bay who created the Ori Bay hair care line and was kind of the biggest name in hair in the 80s and pretty much until his death until 2018 actually still is because that line is fantastic too anyway um it's really sad he passed away when he was only 62 years old but anyhow unknown to Faisal a friend had passed along some of the earlier brush prototypes to Ori Bay who was raving about these brushes to the magazine and it was after that feature that he started thinking more seriously about creating you know an entire hair care brand uh, that could use his expertise and knowledge to develop a highly curated line of products so he started with brushes a few years ago and now has several full ranges of shampoos, conditioners, and leave-ins. Since Raincry started with brushes, let's start by looking at the Raincry Condition Large Pure Natural Bristle Paddled Brush. It's recommended for all hair types, they say, and that this brush uses only the strongest and best quality portion of the bristle. It's called Root Bore Bristles, and it helps to close your cuticle for maximum shine and color retention, and it has a flexible pneumatic pneumatic cushion I uh, hear that helps enhance vitality by gently massaging your scalp and each brush is hand painted in France isn't that just beautiful I don't know if, how well you can see that there but it has like a really pretty you know emblem on here um, I find that the bristles do beautifully get through your hair smooths it like a dream and it has a really nice weight to it too now let's compare it real quick to the Mason Pearson brushes in case you're more familiar with those I have an entire video Video all about Mason Pearson brushes. So I'm not going to go too deep into Mason Pearson here, but just kind of want to show you a comparison. So this is the largest Mason Pearson brush. It's called the Popular. By the way, I've tried to get all my hair out of these, but I do use these brushes. They are my brushes. So apologies if you see a stray, a stray hair or so. Um, so just to kind of show you. So it really matches up um, more to this size, which is the Handy. Um, although it's a little bit bigger. So this is a Rain Cry brush. This is the Handy. And then this is the larger popular. So you can see it's kind of right between these two, um, kind of just a smidge larger than the handy. And then just for comparison's sake, this is the um, pocket brush by um, Mason Pearson. So you can just see those there. And then Rain Cry, uh, you can see here that the uh, Mason Pearson brushes, they have kind of just, I'll just grab one of them here. They just have kind of like a flat, not flat, I mean, it's shiny, but they just have like a, a plain dark, it's a very beautiful handle, um, but there's no tortoise or anything to it. Whereas the Rain Cry does have this beautiful, you know, tortoise, type of a look to it. it it's really really pretty and then they have the rain cry name right here um, whereas Mason Pearson you know has it on the hand this one I've used so much that where it says popular here it's kind of wearing off this large popular brush that I have, this is a combination of boar bristle and nylon bristle. So we'll go ahead and put that aside because we're looking at just boar bristle here. Uh, so we'll go boar bristle to boar bristle. Um, you know, they look very, very similar. Uh, the uh, Mason Pearson brushes have a little hole here where air goes in and out of this little um, kind of pad area. I don't see that anywhere on the rain cry brushes. Um, but again, it does give a beautiful, really probably the closest thing that I found to Mason Pearson, um, you know, to the boar bristle. I mean, they both feel great on your scalp. There's just nothing like it. I'm telling you having an investment hairbrush because I mean, at least the Mason Pearson, you hear, you know, stories that they've lasted for 30 years and are still great. And I've had one of mine now for several years and the others for probably a year and a half, two years now. Um, um, and they they really 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 are are nice um, so you know these feel like the same type of quality so I would expect these to last a really really long time too um, the only thing I would say is that if you have really crazy crazy thick hair you might want to go to something that has a, a nylon bristle worked into it too you know if your hair is really hard to get through this totally gets through my hair even when I've curled it and have a lot of product in it. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying that it doesn't, uh, but you know, it, it, it just, Oh, it's smooth like a dream though, by the way, I have to say, if you want to make a ponytail with this, you know, and smooth your hair back, or like, you know, if you're taking your hair and you have like a, um, you kind of a wave to it and you just want to kind of lightly brush it out and get that kind of wave look. 
oh, this works so beautifully. One other thing, not all boar bristle is alike because I have a 100% boar bristle brush uh, from Rock and Oil. It's probably like eight years old and I don't think they even make it anymore. And while it works well for smoothing my hair, the bristles are a bit shorter. And if I have a lot of product on my hair, I cannot get through it, but I do not have that problem at all with this Rain Cry brush. Editing Nicole here, I was able to find the Moroccan oil brush. So let's pop down to my bathroom to check it out. Please excuse the bit of mess. I wasn't planning on filming in here today. So I've got all my makeup brushes that I just washed. And as I was washing, I kind of was um, going through these that I, you know, were clean and anyhow, I found the Moroccan oil brush that I was telling you about that while nice for smoothing out hair or using it, like if my hair doesn't have a lot of product in, cause I have pretty fine hair. I have a lot of it, but it's very fine. Um, this is it. So I just wanted to show it to you. Turns out that the bristles are the same as the rain cry. Uh, in fact, they might be a little bit longer actually. So I was wrong. What the difference is, is that these are much softer, much more flexible. So like when I take my finger, I don't know if you can tell or not, but uh, you know, they just wiggle a lot more. Now, just for fun, I have my all boar bristle um, Mason Pearson brush here. And if I'm comparing the two, they're so similar. The Mason Pearson might just be the slightest bit stiffer. Uh, and I think that when I look at this, the bunches of bristle on the rain cry look a little thicker, but a little more spread out. And these look like less per bunch with a bit more. So again, um, very, very similar. But if you look close up, you can see that. So I think that's why they work so similarly. They both have really these great boar bristles that are, are fairly stiff, so they really get through your hair. I don't own it, but I did see that Rain Cry now also does make a combination boar bristle and nylon brush. So this is my Mason Pearson one, but just in case you haven't seen one, and again, sorry if there's hair, <laughs> but I do use these. So you can see there are boar bristles and nylon bristles. And in this, the boar bristles are shorter and then the nylon bristles are longer. So let's see, let me get a little up close here. So I don't know if you can see, but so the white ones, those are the nylon ones. And so you can see the little shorter ones are the boar bristle. And I think I paid around $75 for the Moroccan oil brush when I bought it way back when. Again, like I said, I don't think Moroccan oil even sells boar bristle brushes anymore. I was looking online. Um, now this Rain Cry brush retails for $120, which is a bit pricey. But again, like I was saying, you know, the quality, you know, if you were buying a brush for $25, you know, every year or two, you know, after a few years, if those are losing their bristles or just not holding up, you know, kind of amortizing it out, it's really not that big of an investment. Um, you know, especially when you look at what we pay, you know, for a bottle of, um, you know, face cream or, or eye cream, you know? So, oh, and then also rain cry often does go on sale for up to 25% off on skinstore.com. Um, and it, you know, if they aren't on sale, I often have coupon codes that give a good percentage off. So I'll put that down in the, um, description area too, their affiliate codes. Um, and they'll also work on other products too. So if you don't want or end up buying a rain cry brush and want something else, I'll have that down there for you. Now let's look at the rain cry enhancing shampoo. So, they say that it uses a state-of-the-art formula that's rich in ceramides that may not only help preserve but also enhance your color or chemical service. They say that the optimal pH formula in here helps reduce the risk of color fading and chemical service depletion and geranium oil and birch extract are supposed to help lock in um, our color so you can go longer between salon visits. And wouldn't we all like that with what we're paying for color nowadays? Uh, this tube is eight ounces and runs $36. Now the retaining conditioner, dropping things here, uses a blend of hyaluronic acid and traditional essential oils that are supposed to help defend against color fading and chemical treatment washout. And they say that the conditioner is rich in cysteine amino acids and that it also is supposed to help repair damage um, that you're you know, doing to your hair every day <laughs> with uh, chemical processes or, you know, heat and it's supposed to add softness and shine and vitality. And it is really nice. I have to say, I usually with, you know, shampoos and conditioners that are made for color treated hair, I've noticed that they haven't 
always been like giving me like my greatest hair day ever, but I religiously, when I first got this, used it for like a month straight. I think probably five out of seven days a week, which for me, I love to kind of switch my shampoo kind of every other day almost, it seems like, but I use this straight. That's why it's almost gone um, because I had just had my highlights and lowlights done. And you know what? I had really bouncy, shiny, you know, great hair days with this. That smells really good too. Um, let me see if I can describe it. It's a light, just a very pretty, kind of floralish type of a, of a fragrance. It, it smells really, really good. The conditioner is eight ounces and costs $39. And again, you could try my percentage off codes down below if you'd like. They do state that the shampoo and conditioner are pH balanced, paraben free, sulfate free, phthalate free, gluten free, cruelty free, color safe, keratin treatment safe, and frequent use safe. The packaging looks like this. So it's a really nice looking cool tube. And let me show you what it looks like inside. So I just kind of started open cause you have to kind of twist them open. And I thought I'd save you watching me struggle with it. So they're presented really pretty uh, in this tube. And I guess you could reuse this tube, you know, to keep things in, or maybe you cut it down and decorate it and use it for makeup brushes. Also, um, I have purchased two other Rain Cry products, um, a polishing wash and a volume wash. I need to also get the conditioners, but these were actually at Costco.com, significantly discounted. So I bought those. Unfortunately, they didn't have the conditioners, but um, I'll go pick those up online. Uh, and then they also had two Rain Cry brushes. So I'm really excited to try these out. They just came. This is a large size. Uh, this is a, um, not boar bristle. So this is, uh, you know, like nylon or some sort of an artificial material. Um, and then this is their Smooth 2.0. The Smooth was the first brush that they really came out with. So um, since it says 2.0, I'm guessing that this is just the updated version of it. And let me just show you what these look like. A little preview. So this is the Smooth. And it comes with a little bag. This is the volume brush. Also comes with a little bag. One thing I learned when I was lucky enough to attend an educational seminar with Faisal, um, this is before I started using the color line, is that they are obsessed with having their products contain the right pH balance for your hair. And I remember back in the 80s and 90s, a lot of the luxury hair brands talked about the importance of having the right pH balance for your hair. But then it seems like the last couple of decades, I, I just wasn't hearing it, I kind of forgot about it. Um, and what they say is that 4.5 to 5 5.5 pH is like the gold standard and what you're looking for to get the best results. And um, that is kind of what used to distinguish kind of professional hair care from lesser brands. And um, per Rain Cry, I guess a lot of the professional industry products stopped using the pH balance standard to help reduce costs. And that's why, you know, I guess a lot of the brands that are out there today um, cause unbalanced hair. Um, which then, you know, gives you some more damage and moisture loss and things like that. Uh, but you can Google and on some of the lines, you can see what the pH balance is of what you're using. I, I looked at that. I tried that. Um, so when you have a pH balance formula, then your hair's cuticle is supposed to stay closed um, after each use. And then you have shinier, healthier, stronger hair. And then the closing of the cuticle after each use is what helps reduce your damage, the split ends, breakage, you know, and your bond depletion. To have a great hair day every day, check out my other videos if you should be getting suggested to you right now and give this video a like if you enjoyed it and share it with a friend. I uh, would love if you join my community by subscribing. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments area. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.